The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie, and in today's episode, I'm going to be making a shortcut keypad. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So when I'm at my computer, most of the programs I use, CAD and video editing and even word processing or on the desktop, there are loads and loads of keyboard shortcuts that you can use to make tasks quicker. So I've seen quite a lot of projects with a little keypad for the shortcuts. However, it's usually fixed to one application or the buttons are unlabeled and you need to remember what each button is set to, which is also something that I'm not going to be able to remember. So in this project, I'm going to make a keypad for 12 shortcuts with a LCD screen that will tell you what they're mapped to. So when you change which application's set of shortcuts you're using, it will update the keys and the display so you can see which is which. So let's have a look at how we're gonna do this. So for this project, my microcontroller is gonna be the Raspberry Pi PK. This is because it can be set up to be a USB HID device, which is a human interface device. So that means we can make the Pico appear to a computer as a keyboard. So that will make it really easy for sending across the keyboard shortcut key presses. So we're going to use the Pico and then I'm going to have 12 buttons that I can press. So I've picked the Cherry MX switches this is because it's a sort of standard keyboard switch, so it will look and feel like a normal keyboard. So, and I've decided 12 was probably quite a good number. I'm going to have a rotary encoder so I can swap around between them. My idea is I'm going to have a series of files. Each file will be one set of keyboard shortcuts for one program that I use. So I can use the rotary encoder to flick between the programs that I want. Uh, an LCD screen. Uh, this is because I'm going to display what each of the buttons does on the screen above the keypad. And I'm going to put it all in a 3D printed case. Now I could use a normal off the shelf case, but I want a bit of a slope to it like a normal keyboard would rather than it being completely flat. So I'm going to print it, but if you were doing it and you didn't have a 3D printer, then you could use an off the shelf project box and cut the holes for the switches into that. I'm also going to 3D print the knob for the end of the rotary encoder and the keycaps for the switches. All the switches are going to be on wire to the Pico uh, they won't fit in strip board because of the pin spacing. So I'm going to make the case first so I can put all the switches into it and then they'll be held nice and securely and in place whilst I'm programming it up and testing it. I've gone into OpenSCAD and I've designed the framework for it. So. The first thing I've done was I've made a copy of the cutout for what the switch needs. Then I use this to make the key plate. So this is the first part I want. So this will hold the switches in place. So what we've got is 12. I've put them in four across by three down because this is going to fit on my desk best. I've done the edges or with like a slant on them so it will slide in the framework and hopefully not require any glues or screws. So this is the space for the screen. Now I've done this by I've mocked up the screen as a very rough model. So the blue area in this is the visible area of the screen. So I've made that long so it will go through whatever casing to make 
the aperture for the screen. The black bit is the room the actual LCD needs. The red bit is the room for the PCB and the yellow bit is the clearance needed for the ribbon cable that goes around. And then these mounting holes are run here. So when I subtract it from the top framework, it will leave these holes. So that's the key plate. And then the base is a box which is set on a six degree angle. I've subtracted the key plate, so I've got this perfect recess on three sides for it to slide in. There's a hole there for the rotary encoder and then there's this slot at the back. So the key plate will come up to that edge and then this back panel is, has a little lip to fit in that and fills the remaining part of the case with a back panel with a cutout for the USB socket. So I've then also got a knob to go on the end of the rotary encoder that I'm going to fit the end. So now all those files are made, we can get ready and send them to the 3D printer for printing. So here it is, all our electronics inside our 3D printed case. So this is the first stage of assembly. I still need the keycaps on and to do the knob for a rotary encoder. So I'm still planning to 3D print those. But for now, it's at the stage that I've got all the buttons connected. I can start writing the software and testing it all works. I'm not gonna go any further at the minute, just in case I need to make any changes, depending on how the software goes. So let's get started looking at the software. So when we first plug it in, the first thing to do is to install circuit Python on the board. Once that has been installed, it will then come up as this circuit Python folder with our code on it. Now, if I open the Mu editor, which is what they recommend for using when you've got CircuitPython on it. We get this editor, so I can import the board. That gives us all the board information, digital IO time. I'm importing this USB human interface device library. Now I was importing rotary IO, but I was going to use the rotary encoder to do selecting between the programs. Now, I put this in the code and was trying to run it and it wouldn't work. And I found out that this beta three of the circuit Python I'm using actually has an error where that hasn't been implemented properly yet. And it's on the bug list. It should be fixed in the next release from what I can see. But at the moment there is no rotary IO library written for circuit Python. So I have commented out what I was doing with that for the moment. And if you can remember, we were saying I'd wired in the push button on the rotary encoder. So for the time being, I'm actually falling back to that and using that to change which application we're currently using the shortcuts for. So that's worked out good that I'd wired that in or else I'd have had to have gone back and done that. And then we've got bus IO. I've added in the Adafruit Human Interface Device keyboard library. This gives us the keyboard layouts and key codes all already done for us. And I've made my own library called Keysdict, which I've put the code online, but this just links all of the shortcut keys I can think of that will make up the shortcuts and links those into the key code from the Adafruit library. So that was just to save me having all this in my main body of code. 
Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! I'm setting up which pins I'm using on the Pico for my switches uh, and making these arrays, setting up, setting all those pins for the switches as inputs with a pull down and adding them to the array of pins that can be used. I'm using the board LED to illuminate when there's a key press just for a bit of debugging, work out what it's doing. For now it's only illuminated when you're pressing the button so it's nothing but high drain for well i was gonna say battery life it's not on battery uh, and then the switch button so this is now what i'm using instead of the rotary encoder i've left that in so we can put it back in when they release the next version of circuit python for the pk that will hopefully allow it so i'm setting up the uart using bus io this is for screen communications. I'm making a application dictionary. So this is opening a shortcuts.txt file, which is on the CircuitPython device. So to add shortcuts, you can open this. You set what application the shortcuts are first. There's 12 available for each one. The description you want to show on the screen and then what key presses are needed to do that shortcut. So I've set up some for normal desktop operation, LibreOffice, Zoom, KiCad, shortcut. These are probably Ubuntu specific, uh, but it's really easy to change for whatever system you're using and whatever programs you use. So it goes through and sets up all the lines from that file into that dictionary so it can look it up. And if desktop is listed as one, it will set it up as the default. I'm then setting this up so I've got the draw display, which can be run, which will draw the display with the grid that I want for the keys. So this all goes through, sets up lines, grids and changes all that. Uh, and then it will run it with application ID, which at this stage will be the default or whichever's the first one from the text file. And then once it's done that, this is our main loop. So if the button is pressed to change the application, now the encoder is commented out and it's the switch button that's just changing it. So it's only going in one direction. Uh, it will look to see if a key is pressed and which key is pressed. And on release of that key, it will then look up what program, what application and what shortcut was pressed and press the key in the Adafruit hid library that that shortcut needs to press, release and then go back and wait for the next shortcut to be pressed. So that's all our code. So if I now send that to the device, we can have a look and see how it works. So here it is, a first test. So on my code, I wrote in the shortcut file a quick test called testing. So this is just alpha characters. So I can open up a text document. So this is just in order mapped to each key. I can just do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. And that has printed all the characters in the right order on the right key presses. So I'm happy with that. So I'd originally said I was going to 3D print the keycaps for this. However, I just found that you can buy these clear keycaps really easily. They're a really nice sort of soft touch finish uh, and they fit really well. So I can just push them on each key. Uh, and then I 3D printed this knobbed fit on the rotary encoder, just a cylinder that tapers in towards the top. So the files are available to download for this. 
pop onto the Element 14 community and you'll be able to find them all there. So to fit this I'm just going to open up the back and keep my finger behind it because I didn't buy one with a screw thread to hold on and it's a fairly secure fit and will let you push against it but just for the force involved I'm just going to keep my finger behind. That will slide in like that and there we've got our buttons and our encoder that we can press and our hole for our USB. And here we have it, our shortcut keyboard. It's a really nice size, it's neat and compact. I really like the black with the red accent colour scheme. Our LCD is displaying what each switch is currently mapped to. Our case has all worked with the interlocking panels, so I've got no fixings but it's holding together really securely, but I can slide it all apart for any changes or upgrades in the future. And we can see it working if I press the button and change it into LibreOffice. We can then come across here and I can select new and we'll get a new window I can, or a new document. I can select save and it will save it. I can open a new file, I can send it to the printer, I could save as instead of saving it, I can do find. So I'm really happy with that, it works really well. I've currently set it up for LibreOffice and I've also got a shortcut, the video editor I use, KiCad for PCBs, KiCad for schematics and for Zoom calls as well as desktop for doing application switching and opening the application drawer. So here's a closer look. So we finished the shortcut keypad. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It worked really well as we've just seen. I think I'm gonna be using it pretty much every day. Um, and the ability to add in new sets of shortcuts just by editing the text file means that as I think of more shortcuts that I want or new ones, I can really simply add them in. I really like the aesthetics of it. I've just added some little non-slip grip pads into the four corners. So now it sits really securely on my desk and doesn't move around at all. So do you think you might make one of these? What if you do? What shortcuts would you use it for? Let us know over on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents and we'll see you next time.